Good morning, friends, wherever you are, and welcome to today's Cichlids and Coffee. Oh, yeah. Cichlid is in the name, but we, of course, cover everything here from, uh, from community to planted to beta to filters to lighting to uh, just about everything. So uh, don't let the name fool you. Come on in, have a seat, grab a cup of coffee. Let's get uh, let's get underway here. Let's see who we have here. We have Anthony, who says shrimp are like cockroaches. <laughs> well, right off the bat, we alienate all the shrimp keepers in America. <laughs> I think some shrimp are very pretty. Truth be told, it's raining here, and I can hear. Massive frogs outside of my garage. It's actually crazy. They sound like they're they sound like they're uh, an electronic, you know, some type of uh, of a man-made type of alarm. Just a like someone's like turning a grind or something. <laughs> they must be huge to make noises that loud. Local fish store had a whole tub full of uh, tadpoles, and it was very very cool. Uh, mixed in with goldfish and they were they'd come up to the top and breathe and go back down they were about you know four or five inches long big tadpoles very very cool robert thank you so much for that robert sowinski av is good thank you so much appreciate that and uh let me close youtube telling me that i should put an ad in this is a good time for an ad thank you youtube uh i can decide on that on my own please <laughs> Angelo in the house. Hello, Angelo. Christine here. Hi, Christine. Paul Newman. Hey, Paul. Good to see you, buddy. Davy Larson in the house. Z Zip. Sunder India. Hey, Sunder. Good. Good to see you. Cichlid King, one of my wonderful moderators. And let me see. Anthony is in the house. Hey, Whips World. Hey, buddy. Gonna be seeing you in the not too distant future. Terry in the house from upstate New York. Beautiful up there, isn't it, Terry? Beautiful in upstate New York. Let's see here. David Oliveria, getting, Ben getting his coffee ready. This morning, my uh, lovely wife uh, got the coffee ready. She knew I was running a little bit behind, and she had it waiting, waiting for me on the counter upstairs. So uh, love that gal. Sandy. Sandy in the house. And let's see here. R. Baglio. Good morning to you, my friend. Price tag, love that name. <laughs> Price tag. And let's see here. I'm just, I'm just cruising the chat here. Hey, the boss is here. Hello, boss. And uh, peas and haps forever. Good to see you, my friend. Let's see. All right. So we got a great, great group of folks in the house. Leslie Perry has joined us. Clarity Aquatics, great name. Love that name. And. Uh, Jitterjig, hi to you. What a great name, Jitter Jitterjig. I love these names on YouTube. I mean, mine is so boring. Ben Ochart. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> hey, Shane. And Tyler's here. And Gay Aquatics. And Kathy Gunez. I hope I'm. I hope I'm reading that. Absolutely hate ads in live feed. Yeah, I don't. I don't like them. I don't like them. I will. Um, I will drop ads. Hey, Frank. Como estas, amigo? Mucho gusto, Humberto. Uh, I will drop some ads into the uh, post. For those of you who watch the replay, there are some ads in the replay. And that's really uh, the bread and butter of, of YouTubing is the ad revenue. And it's like, like a fraction of a penny for every time you watch one of the commercials. So but it adds up. It adds up. You start getting up at hundreds of thousands of monthly views. And it does start to add up. If you've been at it for a while and you have over a thousand videos, I have over, I have over a thousand videos now up on YouTube. So, all right, William in the house and Oink Master Supreme Forever. Hey, good to see you. And I hope I see you in uh, Orlando in November. Let's see here, Lady Diane in the house, Daniel Velez, well, Jay Fuller. Tammy Harper, great folks coming in. South Mississippi, I've been to South Mississippi, love it. 
Maybe you know about this, Tammy. I took the Natchez Trace from Nashville all the way to uh, down to Mississippi and uh, stayed right on the Mississippi River. Beautiful, beautiful, and uh, just great country down there. Uh, Leslie, yes, I did run across the steeplechase traffic, and very cool, though. You know, I love driving around Tennessee so much that a little traffic now and then doesn't bother me, especially when you're in that part of Tennessee with all the big open fields, you know, the horse, the horse property, the thousand-acre ranches. I mean, I just love it out that way, so. All right, so let, what do you say we uh, do the uh, official the official start to today's live stream? All right, now 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 it's official. Now that we've done that little uh, that little melody. So um, we got some fun stuff to talk about, and Jay Fuller says he had keyboard issues, but did something uh, type up incorrectly. Did you type something insulting by mistake? <laughs> Inventory King in the house. Hey, buddy. Good to see you. You folks want to see a very nice saltwater setup and what I consider to be expert-level plumbing. Check out uh, Paul's channel, Inventory King. Andrew Sparks, si, hablo español, fue mi primer lengua. Spanish was my first language, believe it or not. So, um, quick shout out to uh, the sponsor of a channel, uh, uh, the Cichlid Shack in Tempe, Arizona. Any of my large cichlids that you see are from the Cichlid Shack, as well as many other fish in my fish room. Big shout out to James. Use the Shack Attack 15 for fish orders over $100 and 10% off Shack Attack 10 for dry goods. Not apply to shipping. And you do have several options. You can use FedEx, you can use UPS, uh, but if you use uh, Southwest Cargo, be sure that they deliver to your local airport or you might have a long drive. Also, I, I have to give a big shout out to the uh, Aquarium Co-op has been really helping me out recently with plants and uh, they just sent me out this 36 inch light. This is that plant LED, easy plant LED. This is, um, they offered me any size I wanted. I took the 36 so I could put it on my 90 gallon and not have the light hanging over on each, each end. And they sent me a, um, one of their pumps except this pump has two outlets. So this is one of those lithium battery pumps and anybody who has a, an aquarium in a part of the country that gets blackouts, and it seems like we, we get them almost everywhere now, but uh, definitely invest in something like this. It can be aquarium co-ops, it can be anybody's really, but uh, lithium backup pumps, this one has two, two outlets. I'm going to put it between my my 20 gallon live bear tank and my hospital tank and in the event of a power outage I'm going to have surface tension break up so that oxygen doesn't get depleted. Unfortunately in um, in power outages the thing that kills your fish is a lack of oxygen so you know, you're an hour away, you're out on business, you're away for the weekend, power goes out, and you're going to come back to some very distressed, if not dead fish. Put a type, of, uh, a type of pump in there that detects a power outage and kicks in the battery, and those batteries usually go for, they usually go for 48 hours, so you're, you're usually going to be okay. Unfortunately, I have noticed that the bigger fish will die off first, the ones with the greater oxygen need, and, um, and then it'll die off until whatever's left can be sustained by the available oxygen. So it's a real, uh, it, it becomes a real frustrating situation. So very much uh, recommended. Um, also today, we're going to do a, um, 
a different kind of giveaway. And I, I have a video coming out on Northfin. Northfin contacted me. I did a review that should be out this weekend on the Northfin product. Uh, I gave it a, I don't want to give you a spoiler, uh, but uh, the review turned out very positive. And I have in my possession a very large amount of Northfin samples. This is, this is Northfin. This is all Northfin. I've got uh, some community Northfin. And I've got a whole bunch of betabytes. Betabytes. And Northfin Krill. Northfin Krill. And, of course, I have a lot of Sarah. Very high quality food. I actually do a side-by-side -side comparison of both Sarah and Northfin in the, uh, in the upcoming video. So if you folks uh, participate in the, uh, if you participate in the live chat today, I mean, I'm sorry, in the super chat today, anything over 20 bucks to cover shipping is going to get uh, some Northfin and Sarah. Just be sure that you tell me uh, what kind of fish that you have, and if you want the krill, you want the betta bites, you want the Sarah uh, veggie, you want the the you know, vipan, or do you want the um, uh, Sarah? I have the I have the Sarah probiotic. Just tell me what you want. I'll include a couple packets uh, of each, and if you do uh, a super chat over fifty bucks, we'll throw in one of those new T-shirts. I've got some new tees, and. Uh, it says mess less, mess less, for success, mess less. You'll see it come up here in a second. There it is. One success, mess less. So if you want to, uh, if, if a super chat is over 50, we'll throw in uh, a Teespring tea, and you'll get a couple packets of each of the, uh, each of the food samples, and you'll help a channel. So uh, there you go. Let me go ahead and get rid of all this. There you go. So I'll be taking up your questions here in a minute. Some of you I notice have some questions. And someone is saying I need to crank up my audio. I, someone just told me I had good AV. So let me hear from a couple of you. How's the audio? How's the audio, folks? Tell me how's the audio. A video for geeks. Uh, yes, I have a couple. Um, I do have a couple videos on what I do in the event of power outages. If you look at the um, a couple videos that I did, and maybe uh, some of the uh, moderators can find a link for you. But the uh, I did a video on. The, um, the power backups, and in the power backups, I, I do that. Okay, someone says it's great, but it's low. Okay. So I have one adjustment I can do to audio. So yeah, maybe one of the moderators can find that. Okay, I turned up the audio just a little bit. Maybe that'll help. And turn their volume. <laughs> well, you never want to say that, right? <laughs> I had one person that told me that my uh, video quality was 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 uh, and audio were very poor on a recent uh, video, and you get real tempted to go, well, it might be your equipment on your end, but usually I take the high road and go, thank you, thank you for telling. <laughs> All right, all right. So, uh, uh, GP, let me know if it's clipping now because I turned it up and I am getting a little bit of red zone activity. But uh, I don't know. Maybe this is better. And we did have a, we did have a mic fund going on Super Chats a while back, and I do have that money earmarked for a different microphone. Even though this Yeti, 
this Yeti is supposed to be very high quality, so we'll see. Maybe I, I'd like to get a sure, a sure mic. That seems to be really, really a real good one. All right, so let's see here. No clipping. Thank you so much for that. So what ended up happening, getting into the uh, meat and potatoes of, oh, wait a minute, forgot one thing. Big shout out to my Patreon members and monthly supporters. You folks are very appreciated. The, uh, there's a link to Patreon information in the description under the video. And just a shout out to the Garage Gang. That helps keep the show on the road and will be helping to get me over to Orlando in November for Aquashella. I hope you folks can be there. And also, the, uh, I'm going to be giving uh, two talks in June. I'm going to be speaking in Knoxville to the um, East Tennessee Aquarium Organization, Aquarium Group, and then in um, in. September, I think September 2nd, I'm going to be speaking at the Music City uh, Aquarium Society or Aquatic Group, pardon me if I don't remember the name exactly, but Music City uh, Aquatic uh, Organization. I'm going to be speaking here in Nashville in September. So if you're anywhere near Middle or East Tennessee, stop on by. And uh, folks like my Patreon supporters help me to... Uh, pull that kind of stuff off and travel and get a hotel and all that good stuff. So thank you to you, my friends. All right. So, so what ended up happening? Hey, Aquarium Delirium. Nice to see you. So what ended up happening was I reached a point where I, I was just too frustrated with the amount of plant damage that I was getting in the tank behind me the uh my friends over at the aquarium co-op sent me some val and and you know val grows like a weed right so for the first day for the first day it uh thank you whips world i appreciate that for the first day it looked great second day it looked great i come down on the third day and it has been mowed down to like a, a little a little nub right almost nothing and uh, I said, okay, that's it. And I've been talking about this for a while. So I was ready to, you know, throw out the big net and, and, and get those Buenos Aires Tetras, because I know it's them. I know they're the culprits. So in that interim, between me deciding, between me deciding and, and uh, that I wanted to do that and, and doing it, somebody posted a comment that the Buenos Aires Tetras, that they had had an issue with Tetras, and that they had put them in with some, with some um, you know, like moderately aggressive cichlids. Not the real aggressive ones, right? Not the, uh, not your green tares and your Jack Dempsey's and, you know, your, your uh, dragon, your, your uh, red tares. Put them in with, with fish like these. And, and it had success. I figured, okay, you know what? Uh, what have I got to lose? Now, I'm going to put this out in an actual video. And you'll be able to see. But I went ahead and did it. And in, in, the, first, in the first 15 minutes, in the first 15 minutes, I had a, a little bit of a panic. Because the... Um, the silver dollars I wasn't too worried about, worried about, but the geos have a very big mouth, and so do the, uh, and so the, so do the, the severums, relatively speaking. So I figured they could they could do some damage and maybe even eat one of them if they really really wanted to, and so I did what I normally do. I had the lights off. I kept a good you know close eye on it for for a while, and. They got the usual greeting that new fish get to a tank. Fish were coming over, checking them out, uh, chasing them a little bit. The electric blue okara, which is usually just a big fluff ball, uh, was actually chasing them a little bit. And uh, what ended up happening is it, it settled down. 
it actually settled down. And, and another interesting observation was that in the, in the 55 gallon, being the, the apex predator, being the, the, you know, the, head, the, the head fish in the tank, the bosses, if you will, they didn't school. They just sort of ran around randomly and wreaked havoc and did whatever they wanted to do because nobody was going to mess with them. In this tank, uh, being more of a uh, subdominant fish, they're really schooling a lot. They're a lot, a lot prettier. Let me just turn the camera and show you. I don't know if it's the I don't know if it's the substrate or the lighting, but they look a lot prettier in this tank. The red in the tail and the anal fin. There's a shimmer in the body that the prominence of the black and and I don't know if is that if that's a subdominant. Uh, you would think they would color down in a subdominant situation, but instead what I'm seeing is. Uh, I'm seeing more color, and I'm seeing a very tight, a much tighter formation in schooling, which, which really, really educated me on how schooling is really used as a preservation technique. So if the fish feel extremely confident, the schooling will, 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 will sort of diminish a bit, and they'll be more free swimmers. But what I'm seeing now is a very tight Buenos Aires tetra ball. Like you see those sar sardine balls, you know, in the ocean. And uh, man, they're just staying really tight quarters. And, and I'm loving it. I, I, I love it. I love the look of it. I love the way they're, they're, they're staying tight together. And it might even be helping the geos in the same way that the silver dollars uh, you know, working as a sort of dither fish so that the geos don't, don't, don't harass each other. The one fish I was the most concerned about was the red shoulder severum, and he showed zero interest in the new fish. The, the red spotted gold severum was much more interested in the, uh, in the Buenos Aires tetras, as was the uh, electric blue acara, so that was a bit of a surprise. The AC Heckli could, couldn't give two cents. So a big shout out, and I can't remember the name at the moment, but a... Uh, A very big shout out to the person who suggested or mentioned that they had moved their Buenos Aires Tetras to another tank with other cichlids. Uh, just a big shout out to that person. And I say this over and over again, and it is so true. This is a great example how we all learn from each other. And for me, the adventure of getting into a different kind of fish from the uh, African cichlids I was used to which in some ways is kind of easy, right? No plants, uh, give them some room and uh, change the water. And you, you know, you, you, you don't, don't put fish that look too similar together because they'll kill each other. I mean, it's very, there's some basic rules to African cichlids. And once you've got those down, eh, you know, a lot of water turnover because of the waste. Uh, you know, once you've got those down, you kind of get it. There, there are some nuances and, uh, you know, things about these, these other fish, whether we're talking about the fish themselves or, or the caring of plants or things of that nature, that is uh, in some ways a little bit more challenging and a little bit more technical than, than, the, um, than African cichlids. Now, what's going to happen to the uh, planted tank behind me? The planted tank behind me is going to be uh, getting uh, five new 
five new neon tetras, giving me a total of 15 neon tetras. It's going to get five red tail rasboras that I picked up at the uh, local fish store, uh, the, uh, the aquarium, the uh, aquatic critter. And, and so there's going to be an infusion of, of 10 more fish to replace the activity, movement, and color of these uh, Buenos Aires tetras. They're, they're halfway through their quarantine. I'll keep them in, in quarantine for a few more days. They're looking great. Their colors are great. Their activity is great. They're eating well. I'm tempted to move them over already, but whenever I break those protocols, I, you know, in the past, that's when I paid the price. So I run the full uh, quarantine right from the word, I think, quad or uh, from four. It means four. It means a month. And so you want to you know, quarantine for a month minimum and keep a close eye on them. If they're eating well, they're, they're, they're active, they're colorful, pretty safe to bring over. I don't run them through any kind of a, um, a meds while in quarantine. I only medicate when I, when I see something to medicate. Uh, that's just how I do it. If you like to medicate while they're in quarantine, certainly, and it works for you, why not, right? So let's, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what you are saying in the chat. And by the way, for those of you who came on late, we are, we are doing, uh, we don't do this every week, but this week I am doing a giveaway. Any super chat over $20 gets Sarah and Northfin samples of Sarah and Northfin. Be sure to let me know if you, if you want a krill, community, beta bites, or you know, what, what, kind, what you want. And also I'll throw in some Sarah packets, two of my favorite, uh, uh, two very much favorite foods. And I, I did an analysis, watch for the video. I looked at things like ash, uh, protein content, fillers, binders, uh, that video is coming out. I do a comparison between these these foods, and I, I even looked at uh, Denachi and uh, one other one, it, Cichlid Gold, Hikari Cichlid Gold. Um, so I do a comparison, the video between all of those. These two, Sarah and and uh, and Northfin, tested out very very high, very 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 high quality. So um, if you want some of that, let me know. Any super chat over fifty. Uh, I'll throw in a uh, a mess less a uh, for success mess less t-shirt so just so you know about that and let's see that one right there well that's the back of it that's the back of the T let's see if it'll switch over here in a second it's a fluid situation that's another back of another T <laughs> I have a couple new T's over at the Teespring over at Teespring, be sure to check those out. And uh, it's cycling through here, and we will eventually see the mess less, one success, mess less. So that's the t-shirt I'm talking about. All right, let's take up some of your, some of your questions. And I'm going back to the beginning of the chat. There you are. Your name is in my video forever. Let's see here. If you have any questions, go ahead. Tammy Harper, you're feeding, um, is that you're feeding Buenos Aires Tetras, the uh, unsalted green beans? Interesting. Now, do you find that after you're done, Tammy, is there a big mess? In the aquarium, do you have to do a lot of cleanup because of the uh, of the vegetables? I'd li I'd like to know that for sure. And let's see. I am scanning the chat. Looks like Val is delicious. Lady Diane, Val is delicious. 
Did I put some in my salad, you think? Would it be nutritious for humans too, you think? Silver dollars love plants. Those silver dollars are not getting anywhere near any live plants. This is a plastic plant only. They can chew on the plastic all they want. I don't care. Looks like somebody came in and hit me with a super chat. Hey, Jay. Jay Fuller. Thank you, my friend. Uh, be sure to contact me at ben.o.cichlid at gmail. Uh, remind me of your uh, full mailing address and the kind of fish that you have. And I will go ahead and send you a couple packets of Sarah and a couple packets of the North Fin, North Fin food. I have Betta Bites, I have Krill, I have Community, and I have some cichlid samples. So let me know. Let me know what you want. And with that kind of a super chat, I can, it's, an, it's, an, it's actually, believe it or not, it's because of where I live, it's uh, 45 minutes back and forth to the uh, post office, and usually between 5 and $9 to send out this stuff. So um, YouTube takes 30%. Then there's the taxes that I pay. And so I end up with about $1.50 on a $20 super chat. <laughs> And I'm grateful. I'm very grateful. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. Be sure to let me know, my friend. And let's see here. Video for geeks. Never was a fan of painting ta tank backgrounds. I use HDPE plastic sheet. And uh, video for geeks, you know what I do? I use that uh, Velamax. And maybe one of the moderators can, can post a, uh, a link to, is this the best background, I think? Yeah, my tanks are all Velomax or vinyl. And the beauty of Velomax is you get sick of it and you just peel it off. And Or here, here's something. What if you scratch the front of your tank? And boy, don't you hate it when you're... One day you notice there's a little bit of algae growing and it's in a scratch because when you clean the inside, you had a piece of, of sand or gravel and it scored the... So what, some people flip their tank around. Okay, well, the other side doesn't have scratches. Peel off the back and put it onto the back, onto the, what was the front, and you have a new background. In, you know, easy, easy, easy peasy. Now, of course, that's different if you have a drilled tank that you can't turn around. So, anyway, just something to consider. No mess with the green beans. Okay, interesting. I've been using uh, zucchini and uh, zucchini and cucumber. And man, oh man, do they, do they love it. I end up with, with just a little bit of skin left after a couple of days. And, um, and the snails, oh my goodness, the snails. Snails go nuts on it. They'll, somehow they sense that it's, it's attached to the top corner. And a whole bunch of them will go up there and they'll detach it from, the, from how I have it. And they'll float down with it. And they'll take it to the bottom. And I'll have five or six uh, you know, pagoda snails and a pleco stuck on it. It's actually uh, kind of fun to watch. Uh, price tag wants to know about uh, power heads or a uh, wave maker. You know, there are so many good choices and it really depends on your budget and uh, really how much a gallons per hour you need. You want to go uh, higher end, look at something like tons to higher end, uh, medium to high end. Uh, you, you can go with a, um, maybe like a Higer or a, uh, I mean, there's, there's a third, third generation. I mean, I have, a, I have a couple of videos on wave makers. If you want to just go low end and maybe it'll make a couple decibels more noise, maybe it's a little bit bulkier, but you can pick them up really cheap. Uh, go with the Sun Suns, the Sun Sun power heads. Now, don't forget, not power heads, but wave makers. Now, don't forget, you do need to pull out your wave makers at least three or four times a year. At, I mean, on the, on the bottom end, at least twice a year, and give them a good cleanup because once they build up a lot of mulm, they lose a lot of gallons per hour. 
and I've seen actual uh, tests at Bulk Reef Supply. They did actual tests of uh, GPH, and they saw a, a drop off, a, 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 you know, a pretty drastic drop off on the gallons per hour. So pull them out every now and then, unplug them, pull them out, uh, tear them apart, really clean up, uh, you know, really clean up the impeller and the magnet, the magnet housing, and then you know, put them back in. You'll get uh, top performance. But yeah, there's there's a there's a lot of good good ones out there. Uh, be sure I got the right the name correct. Hold on one second. I said Higer, it's Hydor. Hydor, uh, the, the Corellia pumps. This one here is 2,400, 2,450 gallons per hour. Hydor, this, this is a medium to high quality pump. You'll, you'll not know it's on due to sound. You'll not know it's on. It is absolutely and totally quiet. Another pump that is absolutely quiet, and this one is 3,200 gallons per hour. This is a Shisei Voyager HP. These pumps, Shisei is an incredible uh, pump company. I have the uh, two 5.0s on the 300 gallon and a 9.0 on the uh, 210 gallon. And again, you'll, you'll never know they're on by sound. They're completely quiet. They always go on when you plug them in. So those would be my that or, or something like a Tons or a Neptune. I mean, you, you can get into some very high, high end ones that are very expensive. Uh, I would say if you get into the fifty to hundred dollar range, you're going to end up with one that'll be extremely quiet, will last you a lifetime. You start to go, get to below fifty, you start to get into the twenty dollar, fifteen dollars to get into the Sun Sun pumps, into the Sun Sun wave makers. They're they're so inexpensive. You'll get a couple years out of it, and then maybe it'll start rattling or something. You just throw them away. Now, one last tip: do not get suction cup pumps. Suction, the suction cups, it meant if they fail, you're going to get that thing f flying around. Uh, get magnet attachment pumps. Don't get pumps that, that attach with... Uh, now, some, some of the suction cups are, are the kind that you actually snap down. Uh, I know that Sun Sun had some of those, and those were fairly reliable, but those would also fail, and sometimes the snap would break. So your, 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 best, your best bet is get one with a strong magnet, and uh, use that to attach. So that's my uh, that's my wave maker talk. And in the middle of all of that, somebody hit me with a super chat. Dropping in late, uh, COVID hit my home this week. Oh, I I feel terrible about that. Sorry, Robert. Get better, my friend. I had to pass on Aquashella. Oh man. Hey, get better, and uh, I hope everybody in the house is good and getting better. Hope it's very light, light COVID. And uh, thank you so much for that super chat. Now, uh, be sure to send me, Robert, uh, and I know I've got it somewhere, but, you know, I don't keep those addresses. Send me your address and the kind of food that you would like. I'll send you a couple packets of, of Northfin and a couple packets of uh, Sarah. And I have community. I have Betabites. I have Krill. I have uh, uh, African Cichlid. I've got a variety. So let me know what you want, and I will go ahead and get, get it out to you ben.o.cichlid at gmail.com. I will go ahead and send that out to you. Thank you so much for that super chat. It really helps. So price tag, you're welcome. And cat sailor, let's see. Whips World bought high door wave makers and they were terrible. Well, there you go. Everybody has a, a different opinion. They kept bleeding electricity into the surface water. Oh my goodness. 
Yeah, I uh, never had that issue. Never had that issue. Now, you're saying high door, not Heiger. We're talking high door. So, under those circumstances, it would seem to me that if you contacted the company, they would immediately replace it. No questions asked. So, because that is a, uh, that's a horrible, horrible outcome for us. <laughs> J-Dubs Aquatics in the house. Hello, J-Dubs. Hey, Jerry. Good to see you, buddy. Cichlid Kings. I'm going through the questions now. Aquion. Tammy Harper, Aquion Wave Makers are really good. I've had no problems with those. There you go. And they probably come in, they probably come in for what, 30 bucks? I mean, they're affordable, right? You get into some of these uh, ones that are popular in the saltwater community, you'll pay $100 to $200 for a wave maker. Or some of them have fancy uh, apps. You know, you, you can control them with an app. Or uh, the one I have on the 210-gallon, uh, it has a little control box on the side so I can control the kind of wave. Do I want high and low alternating? Do I want steady? Do I want random? Um, I can uh, give, give it a 10-minute break for a feeding. It has all kinds of little, you know, in a control box on the outside. And then there's other ones that you control from your phone. So, you know, you get what you pay for, I guess. April in the house. April Tolson. J-Bo. J-Bo Crossflow. Uh, Jabo has really come on strong. I know they make decent uh, direct uh, DC current uh, pumps for uh, sumps, and people seem to like them. Uh, there, people would rag them off, you know, cheap Chinese junk, blah blah blah. Well, they're actually they seem to be uh, standing up to the test of time. So. What these companies do is they, they'll get ahead, they'll get a hold of a tons or a high door or a she say, they dissect it and they go ahead and copy it. As you know, in China, they have like no copyright enforcements over there. And uh, at any rate, they uh, go ahead and completely copy it and then they sell it for a third of the price. Uh, the, the materials they use might not be as high quality. And of course, their labor costs are a fraction of what other people are paying who assemble these products in places like Germany or United States or, or even Japan. So, all right, Cat Sailor question. I need to get some calcium in the tank for my snails. Several YouTube videos have suggested eggshells. After you make breakfast, is anyone doing that? Is anyone using eggshells in their aquarium? And what do you do? Just put them in a mesh bag and stick them behind a plant? I mean, I wouldn't want to see eggshells floating around in the aquarium. Do you uh, boil them first? I mean, do you, what, I mean that, that's interesting. You can buy just a little calcium shell, a little calcium block, and drop it in the tank. You could probably also just buy a little bit of um, brush coral. Maybe, bag, maybe buy a bag of crushed coral that isn't uh, crushed too fine. Give it a rinse and drop it into a back corner of the tank, and they'll munch on that. Not a bad idea to have crushed coral in a tank anyway for pH stability because it helps to raise the KH. So you'll, have, you, you, you'll be less likely to have a pH shift or crash. So... Uh, I don't know if I would go with the eggs. I'd probably go get a calcium block or add a little bit of crushed coral, something that they can just, as they slide over, they can go ahead and get. Scrambled eggs? Uh, no, not the eggs, the shells, Dave. The shells, not the eggs. Snails prefer sunny side up, I've heard. <laughs> oh. Oh, so Robert sounds like he's got a serious. Uh, yes, everybody seems to get a different uh, version of it. I've had I had family members that were down and out for two weeks, and then had several months of no taste or smell. And I had a couple family members that were down for forty eight hours, and then were back with like nothing. So it it I 
you know, everybody tends to react to it differently. All right, Crystal C, boil them, grind shells into powder using a mortar or a processor, and then sprinkle a little in the tank. Crystal, is it going to make your tank foggy? Is it going to cause fog or dust? And is it going to get scooped up by your filters and uh, end up in the sponge filter? I, interesting. I mean, I just never heard of this before. Waynard Woolmorans, hello to you, my friend. I'm glad you're here. Lady Diane, eggshells feed them back to the chickens for their calcium, but they have to be dried very well before crushing. Turns them to dust. Learn something every day. Wainer has got his, it looks like he's got some, some Shelleys going. Very, very cool. And you're welcome, Cat Sailor. Lays on the substrate. Okay, Crystal, so it just settles right, right down. Okay. Very, very cool. And I wonder how often you'd have to um, replace it, because, of course, we know that they probably become depleted over time. Salient Aquatics, I recently unplugged. How you doing, Salient? Good to see you, my friend. I recently unplugged my heaters after what, talking? What, with cold water aquatics? And my ambient temp keeps the tanks perfect with no heaters needed. Winning. You know, I, I, I could do that in the summer, but it, it, we do get some fr freezing conditions here. And this is a garage. And it is insulated a little bit. And I do have keep the door open to the house so there's some heat that comes in. But it would get pretty cold in here, even with the space heater that I use in the winter. But yeah, that, that's, if you can make that work, that's more ideal. And, and in my mind, it's more ideal because it's less likely that you'll have a malfunction with a heater. And I've just received too many emails and too many messages over the years showing me a whole bunch of dead fish because a heater went crazy and they were not using a controller the ther the thermostat and the heater stuck and it just kept going i had that happen with a heater recently i killed it killed a gold spotted severum i was very upset and um, a cobalt ecotherm and i was very upset about that but that's good sailing that's good that that's working just go ahead and pull those heaters out, and uh, you don't, if you don't need them in there, no need to have the uh, clutter. All right, any questions, hit me. And did I miss any super chats? Thank you for your super chats. And for those of you who were late, we are doing a nice giveaway today on the super chats. And here we go. Super Chats over $20 gets Sarah and North Fin Food samples. Be sure to let me know what kind of fish you have. I, I've got krill. I've got betta bites. I've got community. I've got cichlid. And any, if you Super Chat over 50, we'll include a mess less t-shirt or a mug of your choice. Just visit the, uh, the Teespring store and you can pick, pick what you want from the Teespring store. Let's see here. This is the link to the Teespring store. So you can see the t-shirts and the mugs. All right. Any more questions? Saline Aquatics, uh, there is, uh, that is actually a good habit to get into. It's very easy for us to become very complacent. Uh, saline is saying, I got myself into the daily habit day and night to check temps and filters. Now, there's, a, there's sort of a fine line, and I've talked about this in several videos. 
there's a little bit of a fine line between worrying too much and introducing anxiety into your fish keeping and just being very you know conscientious and aware and and staying on top of things so it's good it's good i think that you check that now someone asked earlier how often or how much time i don't know which one of you asked this question or if you're, if you're even still here but one of you asked how much time I spend in the fish room compared to the rest of the house. If you count sitting and watching the tanks, like quality time, right? Maintenance time, live stream prep, filter or, uh, and video prep, video filming and live streaming, This is uh, this is probably right up there with uh, the TV room, and I do spend more time in the TV room if I'm blitzing a program. <laughs> I just blitzed uh, Succession, Succession, on uh, HBO Max. Uh, not for everybody, but it's a crazy program. And, and uh, so if I'm blitzing a program, and uh, I'll, I'll spend time. Uh, of course, you get bedroom time, right? You have your, your sleep time. I tend to go to sleep around midnight. I tend to do video editing between 10 and midnight. I don't know why. I don't recommend it. It keeps me up too late. But uh, for some reason, everything's quiet, and I just do that. So, uh, and sometimes I'll edit in the fish room. I'll bring the, you know, I'll have the laptop down here and I'll edit down here. So I don't know. I would say the fish room is, is uh, probably, be probably uh, TV room, bedroom, fish room, in that order. But I do try and spend a lot of time down here. J Dubs Aquatics, cure for checking filters and temps multiple times per day is just more tanks. Then your time is spent doing water changes versus being worried about. <laughs> There you go. Multiple tank syndrome. <laughs> oh, Joey. Okay, let's see. That's true. Too busy to worry. There's one thing to be said for that. Too busy to worry. Ain't got time to bleed. Remember that line? What movie is that from? Don't have time to bleed. And here's your tip. I'm dug in like a Tennessee tick. What movie is that from? All right, so I just released a video on addiction. Are you addicted to a tank? Maybe one of the moderators can share that. Uh, we, I, I, I forgot. The one point that I forgot to include in that video was you open your phone and you go to your photos and the ratio of fish pictures, and maybe this is more for YouTube content creators than, anybody, than, than regular folks, right? But you open up your phone and kids, your kids, your family, it's about a, a 2 to 10 ratio between family and photos and videos of your fish and tanks. And so you've got to scroll through like a thousand fish pictures to find a picture of one of your kids. <laughs> it's embarrassing to say that. I will say, now that I'm a grandfather, I have a large number of river, her name is River, river videos and photos. So uh, it, is, uh, it is actually catching up a little bit. So Paul's been in the fish room doing maintenance. Yes. Is the fish room a room in your house? Is it an attached, like a garage? Is it a separate shed? What do you got there, Paul? Full disclosure, buddy. Now, I know that Corey over at the Aquarium Co-ops, he said that go experience nature. David Glass. No, Henry. Henry got in. A, no, wait. Whips World. Who got it first there? Let me see. Predator. It is Predator. And probably that second tip gave it away. Yeah. Now, 
for a bonus. And a bonus will be two packets of Sarah and two packets of uh, and two packets of Northfin. Who said it? What actor said it? I'm waiting. I'm waiting. All right. Let's see who gets it. And, and no cheating. Don't 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 go into you know YouTube TV and. <laughs> Very easy to remember. I'm not going to give you a hint. It's a very, e a very obvious answer. Boom, Saline Aquatics. Buddy. Jess Ventura. Ventura, though he's, but I, I, we'll, we'll take Jesse Ventura. Send me, uh, send me your, uh, your mailing address again. I'll send you a couple packets of the foods. And let me know, what do you want? Like I said, I got krill, I got beta, beta bites, I got community, I've got cichlid, I got it all. So let me know what you want there. I sent you a couple packets of each there, buddy. All right. Fun movie. One of, uh, one of Schwarzenegger's best. All right, my friends. So uh, we're getting up on the hour. If you have a last minute question, hit me now because we're starting to wind down. Hey, Terry. Did I say nice to you? Uh, did I say hello to you today? Terry Gorsh in the house. Aquarium Delirium. Did I say hi to you, my friend? David Oliveira. Jay Lee in the house. Ross Dingle. Darlene Gamel. All these great names. Crystal C. Harry Bowman. Hope I didn't miss you folks in the beginning. All right. Cichlid Kings hits the drum. <laughs> well, uh, Crystal C, how can I tell if my black skirt tetra is fat or has eggs versus has parasites? Well, it would seem to me, Crystal, first of all, black skirt tetras are extremely hardy. And back of the, in the day when people would throw fish in and in some ways sacrifice them in cycling a tank, the black skirt, the black skirt tetras were sort of the fish of choice. They were, because they're very, very hardy. They're somewhat indestructible. Parasites, is the fish not eating? Does the fish have a sunken belly? You're saying that the fish is fat, so there could be some blockage there. I would uh, I would bet, if you have several of them in there, I would bet it's eggs. If the fish starts to act unusual, avoids food, stays in the corner, clamps fins, I'd pull them out, add a little Epsom salt, and see if that handles any constipation that might be going on, and in the process maybe get some of the parasites out you can always go with something like uh, the prazi prazi pro prazi prazi you can also get uh, paraclens there's some meds you can use i would go with a little light salt maybe a tablespoon for uh, five gallons really dissolve it first and then add it to the hospital tank and uh, see if that helps but i'd wait wait a little bit i it, you know, if they're moving around fine, if they're eating, more than likely it could be eggs. could be eggs. Now, with African cichlids, if a female is holding, right, mouth brooding, they go, what, 24 days without eating? They can have a little bit of a sunken belly, and they avoid food. So, you know, you start treating the tank, and all of a sudden you... You notice that their mouth is all full of little teeny eyes looking at you. So, uh, yeah, you just got to be uh, on top of it. And let's see here. Robert, my family room is my fish room. I'd love to have a couple tanks in the house, but I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. The um, I like I like not worrying about getting water on the floor. I have a concrete slab that, I'm, that my tanks are on, 
And there have been times where, where I've spilled and I've thought to myself, man, if I was on hardwood, I'd be sweating bullets right now because I really damaged the, the floor back in California. And so um, it's almost no, no way around it. Video for geeks. Try the mic without the foamy. Here we go. Ready? One, two. All right. How's that? Does that sound better? Maybe I have a blocked foamy. My problem without the foamy is I tend to pop. I tend to have a little bit of a pop. So tell me, is that better? Is it better without the foamy? Probably looks better. Looks a little more high tech. <laughs> a little more pro. But tell me, does that sound better? Missed your question. Lady Deanne, can you repeat your question? Go ahead, type in your question, and I will go ahead and answer your question, Lady Deanne. Or is it Lady Diane? Am I pronouncing it right? Okay. So I'm going to go into mic settings after we get off the... Uh, but everyone else seems to think, I mean, the reports from everyone else seems to be that it's sounding okay. So I'll go into settings and uh, video for geeks. If you can um, send me an email and let's talk a little bit about, uh, about mics, if you'd be kind enough, send me an email at ben.o.cichlid and I'll, I'll send you what my settings are. And maybe you can help me because there are some um, there are some filters that are being used, and maybe like the sound gate, and maybe that might be a little bit too tight. There might might be a few things going on, and and maybe you can, or maybe if you can send me an email of if you're familiar with uh, OBS, if you're familiar with OBS, let me know what you think are the best settings the best OBS audio settings, all right? But then again, here I go. I got other people telling me it sounds great. So, all right. Lady Diane, your, your, your hands are, are wet now. Let me go back and see. Let me see, Lady Diane, Lady Diane. Let me see if my old eyes can see your... Uh, as I scroll through, I wasn't ignoring you. Jake, what do I think about feeding every other day? If your fish seem healthy and colorful, why not? Why not? If it works for you, again, what works for one tank and one setup might not work for another. And sometimes the issues that come up might not be apparent immediately, but might be apparent later, only because some fish can't get to the food or, you know, there's just different issues. All right, so I am scrolling. Lady Diane, I don't see your question. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Is there any detriment to adding water conditioner to the tank instead of my sump in a 40-gallon trash can? I'm getting so much detritus of mineral in my sump, I have to clean it often. Uh, I add directly to the tank, but you will get the same results if you add to the sump. You can also add um, you know, conditioners as well as, as, well as uh, meds can be added directly to a sump if you want to mess with the tank less. But uh, that's your call. You're going to get the same result either way because the sump, assuming your sump is getting good circulation, uh, you're going to get the same result. And so when I do a sump top-off, which I do once a week, on the big tanks, I'll do a top-off once a week and, and then do a water change every other week. And I'll go ahead and when I do the top-offs, I'll, I'll add conditioner to the sump. When I do the water changes, I'll add it to the aquarium. 
and I just added for the full volume of the aquarium as recommended by the conditioner manufacturer who is trying to sell as much conditioner as possible. <laughs> so on that note, let me, let me show you the tanks. I haven't shown you the tanks today, and we, we, didn't do a, uh, we didn't do a lap of the fish room. So hold on one second. I thought we were going to end off. Here's the 90 gallon from this unusual angle. There's the 20 gallon tall rimless tank from uh, glass cages. Actually, the 90 gallon is also from glass cages. But there's the 20 gallon rimless. And those live bearers are just nuts. They keep making fry, and they're just having a good old time in there. You can catch a sliver of my hospital tank back there. That has the red tail rasboras and the neons. They're all doing great. So well, this way, you'll see the... Uh, little better duplex and I'm, I'm, lo I'm loving that uh, little Dumbo and of course the, the red the red and blue one up there is also very pretty the Sprite for some reason the Sprite is really thriving in that tank maybe the proximity of the light it, I mean the light is practically right on top of the Sprite and I've got Sprite coming out of the water in that tank it's growing out of the water, like breaking the water surface and looking really pretty. But that's the beta tank. And let me swing the camera over. And there's the planted tank without the killer Buenos Aires, without the plant killers. So I'm hoping that Val in the back corners of the tank is going to start growing. And you're going to see a, a video on the whole process and, and just how much of that Val was destroyed in a two, three-day period. But that tank is, the plants in it right now are really rock solid. Blackbeard algae has disappeared entirely. Combination of the autos, phosphate pads, and all the other stuff I did. You saw my Blackbeard Algae video. Over. Going over to the 210. Two ten is rocking and rolling. Look at the size of that vieja. Maybe pushing eleven inches now. Oscars are still hanging out. Best buddies. I think you're going to be seeing a face-off by the Nicaragua and the Firemouth. Let's see if they do it. Oh no, the Salvini broke it up. They keep their distance from the Salvini. Nobody messes with the Salvini. Jack Dempsey has been a lot more active attacking food, as has the uh, Green Terror. They're probably hungry. Let's see, if they, let's see if they respond to my hand. There you go. Let's take a look at the big tank, the 300.
That sand diver is just nuts. He's got to be around 9 inches, 10 inches. Throw a little food in there for him. This is a mix, a mix of food. Can't see it really in the in the uh, low light, but I've got a little bit of everything in here, and I've just added some of the North Fen. Nachi, Northfen, Kari, Sarah, a whole bunch of different kinds of food in there. All right, let me bring it back around. Well, we thought we were done, and some of you left, and we ended up with a, we ended up with a lap of the fish room. Go figure. <laughs> All right. So let's see. Any last-minute questions? We're running a little bit long. Crystal C, do you feed every day? Yes, I do. I feed uh, the better fish get fed once a day, the, uh, and the rest of the fish get uh, fed twice a day. Sometimes I do, uh, sometimes I, I, I will uh, withhold food from the bigger fish for uh, one feeding or maybe for a day just to kind of clean them out a little bit, especially the African cichlids because they, they do get bloat. However, I, uh, I do notice that they are way more aggressive when they're hungry. So I don't, uh, I don't do it too often. Davy Larson comes in with a super chat. Thank you, my friend, for the microphone fund. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Davy. Appreciate that. Did I miss any other super chats? Whip's World, more contributions to the mic fund. Whip, that puts you over that $20 limit, my friend. Send me an email. Let me know what kind of food you want. I'll send you some food. I've got a lot of it. Got a lot of these samples. Northfin and Sarah. Big shout out to both Northfin and Sarah for providing those samples. All right. So you, I'm glad you liked it, Cat Sailor. And thank you, everybody, for sitting in with me today. I hope you had a good time. I will see you this coming Saturday at the same time. And watch for some upcoming videos on... Uh, the transferring of the, Buena, the Buenos Aires Tetras to the 90, and uh, also the North Finn, Denachi, Sarah, Battle, and what else? Was, oh, and Hikari. I mean, it's a food battle. Watch for that video. I think it just says North Finn on the, on the, on the uh, actual thumbnail, but watch for that video as well. So i got two videos pretty much ready to post. Watch for those, and uh, that's it. Thank you, my friends. You are the best. You rock. And I will see you again soon.
Now, what button do I hit to end the live stream? My goodness. Okay, here we go. Let's go with this one first here. We'll do the we'll do the dropping logo and then we'll segue into the final screen.